perhaps the greatest victory for complete BS orbiting the demented musketeer's new ute tax is the imposition of a fake economic instrument known as the offset credit, which essentially monetizes insufferable green virtue. In this video, therefore, I'm going to show you why this whole process is a comprehensive scam. I'm John Gergen from autoexpert.com.au. New cars cheap. Australia only. Website card. If you are BYD or Polestar, Tesla, etc., your vehicles are only electric. You don't do so to speak, combustion, do you? Therefore, you don't consume any liquid fuel. Well, I suppose you might, but your vehicles don't. In the case of you, consumption of liquid fuels, not recommended. Good safety tip. Under the ute tax, which is going to be instituted by our social engineering labour government specialists, you are going to get a credit as an EV maker for your non consumption of fuel, your non-emission of CO2, same thing. You can then sell that credit to a competitor whose consumption exceeds the government mandate. So this thing, this means of exchange, an offset credit, is going to be a tradable economic instrument. So you get to go from being in deficit to balancing the books in exchange for money. In other words, if you are one of those heavy consuming Car makers. If a competitor to an EV car maker, for example, Isuzu or Ford or Toyota, one of those heavy drinkers who will be behind the eight ball on all of this, if one of those companies is going to breach its cap, then it can buy, say, some of Tesla's non consumption bullshit credits and thus sidestep any fine issued by Bowen's Department of Social Engineering. The best way to understand why this whole scheme is a flat-out fraud is to do a simple thought experiment in a parallel universe on parallel Earth, in parallel Australia, and that will be coming up in just a sec. You can buy an EV if you want, that's allowed, free country, blah blah blah, but it's going to depreciate to nearly nothing in 10 to 12 years, if it lasts that long. And it's not actually that effective against climate change. But for less than 20 grand, you can get a quality rooftop solar system with a battery backup. If you've already got solar, you can just add a battery. That's dead easy too. Solar's going to slash your electricity bill, add value to your house, protect you from power failures, and the battery can store the electricity that you generate during the day and divorce you from the grid overnight for a fraction of the cost of an EV. Visit autoexpert.com.au slash solar now. I've just partnered with a leading Australian solar specialist. I've known the owners for years. They do hundreds of installations every month. They handle the whole thing, the rebate, the approvals, the bureaucracy, and they use only quality components from suppliers with good local support. In other words, the roof's not going to be leaking afterwards and you won't be emailing the help desk in China if there's some problem. They'll just sort it for you. In most cases, you're going to be up and running in a day. If you don't know a kilowatt hour from an inverter, no problem. You'll get a reliable system that'll slash your power bill at least and might even be cash flow positive. It can even make your house apocalypse proof. Not only can you get seamless blackout protection, the solar array can continue to charge the battery when the power is out. That'll keep you going for days. Extreme weather events and grid instability, that's just how the future's gonna be. This is protection against that, and it's easy to do at a fraction of the cost of an EV. Nobody likes paying for electricity, I get that, and it's never gonna get cheaper. This is how you divorce yourself from that upward spiral as well as burning the coal that goes with it. Coal is, of course, the biggest source of CO2 emission in Australia. Home solar is how you take effective climate action today. And unlike an EV, a good solar system with a backup battery will typically add many times its cost 
in value to your house. Visit autoexpert.com.au slash solar today. Just fill in the contact form and find out how simple and cost effective the right solar and battery system for your home can be. Perhaps in our thought experiment on parallel earth in parallel Australia, in parallel federal parliament, there is a parallel Barnaby Joyce. I do hope so. Like, it can't just be our universe, dude. Like, what did we do specifically in this one to deserve the only Barnaby Joyce in all of the universes? There has to be more than one, please. Anyway, over there in parallel Australia, he's not our Barnaby Joyce at all, but rather a completely hypothetical parallel one. BJ Doppelganger might be his rap name. Our Beetrooter is a completely different individual to the parallel one. I make no reference to our BJ. Our Beetrooter is a crimson beacon to us all, I'd suggest. A social icon. But anyway, I'm not talking about him at all. Perhaps Parallel Barnaby in Parallel Parliament is the uh, Minister for Extramarital Affairs. He heads up this great department which keeps tabs on this kind of thing. The Federal Department of Rooting Around, the FDRA. One day, Parallel BJ is in his office copying a massage and a manicure on the taxpayer and scoffing, I don't know, half a dozen of those cute little miniature Parallel Wagyu beef burgers from the Parallel Parliamentarian kitchen. And then an otherwise ideal day is shattered. The hotline rings and it's God. And dude, she's pissed. She goes, Oi, BJ, you Australians are just mad rooters, son. It's just you and Russia left. Everyone else, seemingly, has standards. This flagrant disregard of my policies on infidelity has to stop. The parallel beetrooter is shocked by this. He thinks, me, this is a disaster. This biatch is going to lose us the election. And God goes, you know I'm always listening to your thoughts, BJ. I invented parallel George Orwell. A parallel Beetrooter goes, oh, Jesus, sorry, big fella. Here's what we'll do. I'll implement a national fidelity standard ASAP, a national Australian fidelity standard. We'll call it NAFs. We'll cap flings on the side at six per year starting, I don't know, July the 1st. That's a 50% reduction on the national average, which is not insubstantial. And we'll drop it by one fling a year every year thereafter. So in seven years' time, we'll be at net zero flings. Sound like a plan? God's not exactly thrilled with all of this, right? Like, she's not happy, typically, unless she's, you know, flooding the earth after emailing some random dude a set of DIY boat plans, etc. But hey, it's a start, right? So here's parallel me now. He's just an average dude in middle management in the parallel Australia. This new development, inspired by God and implemented by Parallel Beetrooter, directly affects my doppelganger. He would be the sales director for the nation's top importer of plastic dog shit from China. It's a very important job. Like, he has a Blackberry and everything, dude. At the end of every month, right, Parallel Me and his assistant, Candy, who's smoking hot and clearly has some deep daddy issues that she needs to resolve. We book a room at the Hilton, order up a couple of bottles of Parallel Verve and uh, we crunch the numbers. We open a spreadsheet, we thrash things out, we come to an understanding, we get things, you know, basically ship shape in time for tomorrow's sales presentation to the board. Hashtag productivity. There's also an informal performance review, which is a kind of 
consultative process, I suppose. Typically, it's a very satisfying, productive evening, and we double check everything, like measure twice, dude. Cut once. But thanks to God and BJ, parallel BJ, I'm gonna uh, blow my six fling cap on the 31st of January, aren't I? And then the fucking FDRA is gonna send me a thousand buck excessive poon on the side on the spot fine. Unless I go next door. See, my next door neighbor Trev is as faithful as the day is long. Like, dude, it takes all sorts of people to comprise a society, I suppose. It's hardly my, pa- my place to judge Trev and his unconventional conduct. At least now, Trev gets government credits for the six infidelities which he has allowed, but which he fails to commission, right? So that's a substantial change. Thanks to the high-tech miracle of the new infidelity virtue economy, Trev can sell his zero fling credits to me. I offer him, I don't know, 250 bucks a throw. He jumps at it. Like, he's super chuffed because now his fidelity has monetary value. He gets paid for my monthly hikes up to the summit of Red Bush Mountain. I'm not exactly thrilled by all of this because it's still costing me 1500 bucks for those... Um, Six high altitude monthly reconciliations with candy. But uh, I suppose that's still better than six grand in fines, which the department of rooting around was going to issue me. And I can probably, I guess, sneak 250 bucks a month in on my expenses, can't I? Everyone else is going to be doing that. It's hardly like I'm going to be standing on my own in the dock. So... When the FDRA sends me the fine for January's ascent, I just put it in a self-undressed envelope together with a certified copy of one of Trev's zero fling credits and they waive the penalty because net zero. Parallel b is thrilled, dude, because next time God interrupts a manicure and a massage, he can show her a system that's clearly working. There's economic activity to be tracked, and we are absolutely on a path to net zero adultery. Yes. I suppose, should Candy whisper, what's wrong with right here on your desk unexpectedly one evening, I'm going to be short one credit, am I not? And uh, Parallel Beetrooter is going to get cash via the FDRA and put it in the Treasury by way of the fling tax that I will be unable to escape. It's a tax on rooting around, but I guess those mini Wagyu beef burgers aren't going to cook themselves, are they? And parliamentary massage therapists certainly deserve to be paid handsomely given the rigours of their work. Anyway, there's one problem with this whole freaking system, is there not? Can you see it? It's really simple. It's like right there in your dial, dude. The total amount of rooting around, it hasn't changed. It's still 12 for parallel me, and it's still zero for parallel Trev. And last time I freaking looked, 12 plus zero still equaled 12. The great fraud, I would suggest, of these offset credits is that they set up an entirely fake economy based on the entirely false presumption that zero of something offsets one of the same something. This is therefore a user ultimately pays tax, which will have next to no impact on rooting around over in parallel Australia or on human health or the climate here. But it does monetize the nauseating virtue of twats, doesn't it? Not that they weren't already insufferable enough. And it's a dead sneaky way to tax CO2, isn't it? Because that is exactly what's going on here. But of course, only for cars, not for coal or gas or anything else. So At least the motorist remains the government's frickin' golden goose. 
That's a constant in an ever-changing world. If you smell formaldehyde and green apples coming from the lodge on September the 28th of 2025, do not say that I didn't warn you. And do enjoy paying 10,000 bucks more for your next ute, dude. That sounds like fun. The only person wearing a big, shit-eating grin from ear to ear over this latest social engineering green thought bubble is the starch.